Jared Polin fro knows photo Dot com and this is the photo of the week for June 20th 2010 and it is the Hooters before they walk to the stage or as they are walking to the stage uh, for one of the last shows at a great showplace as it's called America's Showplace the Philadelphia Spectrum where the Philadelphia Flyers played all of their games as well as the 76ers uh, they are knocking it down as soon as they decide to blow it up it's one of the greatest places to ever watch a hockey game. It's a great place to watch concerts. They've had a ton of concerts there. Everybody has played there. So, you have this photo for the photo of the week. It's the Hooters as they're walking to the stage. You may know the Hooters from songs like And We Danced and All You Zombies or Satellites. They're really big in Europe, Sweden to be particular, and Germany. I don't know why, but they have a nice following there. But this is about the photo. I was at this show. Uh, I didn't know. Well, they needed a photographer, but I wasn't sure that they did need a photographer. I was told that they were looking for somebody, but I couldn't get a hold of anybody who you know was in a position that could tell me whether they did or not. So I was told just to show up by a guitar tech friend of mine who would be out there, and he said, just show up. So I show up park my car, say what I'm doing, I show all my photo passes, because you, if, if you act like you belong, or you look like you belong, or you know the proper protocol, the security guards are going to let you by without a problem. So, I parked my car, walked straight down the ramp, right in the back door, this is well early, well before the show, walk right up on the stage, find my friend, who is the guitar tech, and say, hey, I'm here. Uh, he takes me to the dressing room where I talk to the uh, tour manager and let her know who I am. Basically, I just hand her my book and say, hey, I heard you need a photographer. I'm here. Here's my book. That was it. She liked the work. She showed it to the whole band. The, this was the first time I met these guys and, you know, I just sat, talked, didn't take any pictures right away. Remember that. Don't just take your camera out and start shooting if they don't know you. Let them get to know you first and then you can start shooting because then they're comfortable with you. Make sure they know your work, see the type of work that you've done, and then they will just let you do almost whatever you wanted. So I, this was the first of like four or five times that I photographed the Hooters in, in the matter of a month, and you know it was a lot of fun. So let's let's get to this photo. We've already done sound check. We've already done you know catering and eating and doing all of those things before the show. And I know that they had to walk down this hallway in order to get to the stage. So I planted myself around a corner that I thought would have a nice looking background and, and, and where there was more light. Because as you can see, the front guys have more light in their face than the guys in the back because there's not a lot of light down there. This was built in the 60s, 1963, I believe the stadium was built and uh, for the Philadelphia Flyers when they came to town. So there's not a lot of great light. It's just an old, old place, but it's got a lot of history. So I knew they'd be walking. I didn't tell them what to do. I didn't let them know I'd be there. I was just there. Um, settings, Nikon D3, Nikon 24-70, F2.8, ISO 4000, shot at 1 200th of a second to try to freeze the action, uh, shot at 2.8 at 50 millimeters. So there was a little bit of zoom in on there. Probably would have been better with a 50 millimeter fixed at 1.4. And something here is I could have shot higher than 4,000 with the D3, but I didn't want to push it at the time, and so I didn't. Um, really, nowadays I would probably have shot it at 10,000 ISO to give me more depth of field, but everybody looks good here. If I had some more room, I would try to use the 70 to 200. It would compress the background more, but this worked really well because you, you have to be prepared whether I could zoom in or I needed to be wider. It was whatever was going to work at that time, and I and I felt that the 24 to 70 was going to be more versatile. It's also very harder to shoot with a 70 to 200 uh, because if they get too close, you've missed it. You can't do much. That's why some people have multiple bodies. But I personally want to get back into focusing in on either ultra wide with the 14 millimeter or sticking with the 70 to 200 and shooting at the 200 range and compressing my backgrounds. I've gotten away from that too much and I feel that that's hurting my work. So I personally want to get back to using a longer focal length to separate my subjects from the background and just get back into more of what, you know, how I formed my style. Um, 
I was able to freeze the action at 200th of a second. I cheated the system here to bring it back later in the raw file. I didn't want to go above 4,000. The D3 is great at 4,000. It's good at 5,000. 6,400, you start to you know, get to a little bit of a hairy zone. But I knew that I could bump it at least a stop over, uh, to be a stop under, underexposing to allow the action to be frozen and then be brought back in the raw file like I've mentioned before. So they were walking towards me. I snapped off four or five different pictures. Got my focus. On, I had my focus on continuous. I knew I wanted to focus in on the center guy or anybody in the front. And they just were in the right position when they were walking. So sometimes these things just happen. You, you, you anticipate. I anticipated what was going to happen. I prepared for 10 minutes sitting on the floor taking pictures of different people walking by to get a feel for what the light would be to get a feel for where the positions would be the best angle and I like shooting at a lower angle for guys like this or for celebrities or for bands because it gives them the allure that they're they're larger than life when you shoot at a lower angle with people it makes them seem larger um, so that's exactly what I did here so the, they basically were walking out on the stage to start the show to play the national anthem that's why they've got the the drummer Dave here has the drum in his hands because he is about to, they're about to sing the national anthem. Uh, but these guys are a bunch of great guys. Um, they've written some amazing songs. Uh, one in particular, Cindy Lauper. Um, uh, boy, Time After Time. Uh, the gentleman in the center here, Rob Hyman, wrote Time After Time. Amazing song. Uh, the gentleman behind Rob on his right is Eric Bazalian. He wrote What If God Was One of Us. Talk about some of the greatest songs ever written. Those two wrote two of the greatest songs ever written. And I think Time After Time is one of the most recorded songs in history. Uh, more people have recorded that song than anything else. I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I, I'm pretty sure that that's true. So I've spent time with these guys in their studio. I spent time at Eric's house in his um, garage studio, which is beautiful. He's got uh, you know a grand piano. He's got his whole rig. He's got his whole setup. Just great stuff. Really genuine guys. Every one of these guys is great. Um, that's just the Philly nature. These guys are awesome. So, so that's it. We've got you know the Hooters right here. We've got the songs playing in the background that you've been hearing. Uh, check out more information from time to time as I put it up on froknowsphoto.com. But for this photo of the week, it's the Hooters walking to the stage at one of the last shows at the Philadelphia Spectrum. And that is it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.